So it was a movie that changed film history, some say for the worse, others say for the good, but Tarantino's original magnum opus, magnum opus Reservoir Dogs, who came out, which came out in 92, has uh, impacted cinema ever, ever since. It led to Pulp Fiction, it led to the return of what he called modern film noir, and for me it's his best movie, not because it's the, uh, the best script or whatever, but the originality by stealing from multiple genres are in every frame. Now, Quentin Tarantino had been working at Video Archives, a video store in Manhattan Beach, California, and originally planned to shoot the film with his friends on a budget of $30,000 in a 16 millimeter black and white format with producer Lawrence Bender playing a police officer chasing Mr. Pink. Bender gave the script to his acting teacher, whose wife gave the script to the great Harvey Keitel. Keitel liked it enough to sign as a co-producer, so Tarantino and Bender would have an easier job finding funding. With his assistance, they raised $1.5 million. Keitel also paid for Tarantino and Bender to hold casting sessions in New York, where the duo found Steve Buscemi, Michael Madsen, and Tim Roth. John Cryer was asked to audition for the role of Mr. Pink, but he backed out at the last minute. James Woods was also considered for Mr. Pink, but his angel turned it down without telling him. Viggo Mortensen and George Clooney were also read for roles, while Tim Roth's agents originally wanted to be Mr. Pink or Mr. Blonde, but he preferred Mr. Orange because he would be an English actor pretending to be American playing a cop, pretending to be a robber. Now, the film contains multiple homages to other films. Tarantino himself has said that Reservoir Dogs was influenced by Stanley Kubrick's 56 film noir The Killing. I didn't go out of my way to do a rip-off of The Killing, but I didn't think of it as, as my killing, my take on that kind of heist movie. The film's plot was also inspired by the 52 film Kansas City Confidential. Additionally, Joseph H. Lewis's 55 film The Big Combo and Sergio Corbucci's 66 Spaghetti Western Django inspired a scene where a police officer is tortured in a chair. Having the main characters named after crooks, Mr. Pink, Mr. White, Mr. Brown, etc., was first seen in the 74 film The Taking of Felon 123. The film also contains key elements similar to those that are found in Ringo Lamb's 87 film City on Fire, not the Canadian terrible movie. Tarantino praised the film City on Fire and mentioned it as a major influence. Now, Tarantino said that everybody hated Lawrence Tierney, but he ended the first week of production uh, because he played like the, the guiding uh, older uh, crook of the group. Now, the warehouse scenes were filmed in an unused mortuary filled with coffins, funeral equipment, and bombing fluid and a hearse. Mr. Orange's apartment was a room in the second floor of the mortuary, set to look like living quarters. The building has since been demolished. Now, Tarantino's decision not to film the diamond robbery was twofold, for budgetary reasons and to keep the details of the heist ambiguous. By not showing the robbery and having the characters describe it, Tarantino explained, the film is allowed to be about other things, similar to the way in which the burglary in Glengarry Glen Ross in its film adaptation is discussed, described, and debated, but never shown. Tarantino compared the technique to the work of a novelist and said he wanted the film to be about something not seen and to pay with a real-time clock as opposed to a movie clock uh, ticking. Now, it premiered at Sundance in January 92. It became the festival's most talked about film and was subsequently picked up for distribution by Miramax. After being shown at several other film festivals, including in Cannes, Sitges, and Toronto, Reservoir Dogs opened in the States in 19 theaters some uh, nine months later, with a first week total of 147,839. It was expanded to 61 theaters on October 23rd, 92, and totaled 2.832 million at the domestic box office. The film grossed more than double that in the UK, where it did not receive a home video release until 95. During the period of unavailability on home video, the film was re-released in UK cinemas in June 94. Now, uh, considered an important influential milestone of independent filmmaking, review aggregation web website Rotten Tomatoes gives the film an approval rating of 90% based on 81 reviews and an average rating of 8.9 out of 10. The site's critical consensus reads, Thrumming with intelligence and energy, Reservoir Dogs opens Quentin Tarantino's filmmaking career with hard-hitting style. On Metacritic, the film has an average score of 81 out of 100 based on 24 critics, indicating a universal acclaim, and Empire Magazine has called it the greatest independent film ever made. Now, what really stands out for me is uh, unique scenes not involving the heist, especially Tarantino's character uh, having a conspiracy theory that Madonna's uh, song, Like a Virgin, 
is not about a, a girl that's been betrayed and finds love again. He basically believes that uh, the, the Madonna character in the songs, Vagina So Used Up, that uh, she gets a big black stud and basically be it feels it like when it first became a virgin, which is total horseshit. But the, uh, the, also the key scene where Tarantino, uh, Buscemi's character, doesn't want to tip. And um, everybody's supposed to give money. And Keitel basically gives a uh, peon to socialist workforce saying how uh, a waitress is one job every woman can do. But it needs to be respected because they're in, they're in a place that's, you know, they're, they're supporting family or friends or, uh, you know, college career or whatever. And Bush, Buscemi eventually... Uh, capitulates and uh, but it's, it's kind of weird and the walking away from the bar see the, the concept of film where getting a bunch of a bunch of crooks that are not known to each other believing that's going to be better for uh, to put it all together but uh, Christopher Penn is tremendous in this as the uh, the son of Tierney's character that's kind of putting it all together Michael Madsen's uh, character is totally uh, totally evil in every way because he took a uh, he spent time in prison to protect uh, the code, as we say, the mafia code, and he'd come out. He's a psychopath, so he must have been beaten by cops in the uh, in the jail because he what he d d does to that uh, uh, kid, uh, uh, kidnapped cop in the chair is basically uh, to stuck in the middle middle by Steeler wheel. By the way, the soundtrack of Reservoir Dogs is a character in itself because uh, uh, Stephen Wright plays the uh, put upon uh, DJ. And uh, he doesn't basically want to be there. But not say it is shot like a play, but it's kind of uh, very uh, one-sided. You know that no one is going to get out of this situation alive, and that's what pretty well happens. And what Kai, what Kai tell is sort of like the brains of the operation, because when Tim Roth's character gets shot, he basically said, you know, you don't die right away from, from a certain wound. You live a long time. So... They got into a situation where uh, basically they couldn't get out. Uh, the the violence, not say is limited, but the violence is more cerebral than anything else. Most of the characters in the in the movie, uh, you know, uh, wouldn't be trusted to do the right thing. So it, it's kind of weird how it goes in. I think the only person that gets away with is a Lawrence and Lawrence Tierney character, and uh, you know he had a kind of a slight comeback uh, at the time because he was. Uh, in that uh, Star Trek uh, episode, you know, on the holodeck when uh, Dixon Hill was played by Picard and uh, uh, he playing uh, Red Block. Uh, I think that was his name. Anyway, he was well put together. But Lawrence Tier Tierney, like I said, tough as nails. And he was also in Hill Street Blues for a little while too. So that was another situation. He became more well known for his character roles rather than film noir. So ladies and gentlemen, Reservoir Dogs is a four-star movie. If you haven't seen it before... It's on Hollywood Suite in uh, Canada this month. Uh, so is Pulp Fiction. Give it a view. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, if anybody asks you to join a group with only colors for last names, please refuse. Ba basically, if you like what you're doing here with our vintage uh, movie podcast, let us know in a like, comment, subscribe, or share.